Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers First Amendment retaliation, handgun licenses, and firearm policies, and is brought to us by Clear Lake Community Watch's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On July 20th, 2022, Auditor Clear Lake Community Watch, who we will refer to as Mr. Clear Lake, drove past Deputy C. Vega of the Harris County Sheriff's Office as he was conducting a traffic stop in Seabrook, Texas. Mr. Clear Lake rolled down his window and yelled an anti-police sentiment, including a profanity at Deputy Vega as he drove by. Deputy Vega abandoned the traffic stop, got in his vehicle, made a U-turn, and began to follow Mr. Clear Lake. Mr. Clear Lake properly signaled and made a right turn, and Deputy Vega activated his lights to pull him over. Mr. Clear Lake immediately pulled into a gas station and stopped his vehicle. Why do you pull me over? I'll tell you that if you roll it down. Why can't you tell me now? Because the reason I pulled you over is you were yelling something from your car. So what? Huh? So what? That's okay. why you pulled me over? Because I'm because yelling? I don't know if you need help or anything. Oh, I don't need help. So, Thank you. Okay, let me see your driver's license real quick. I don't need help. Deputy Vega claims that he pulled Mr. Clearlake over because he yelled out the window, although he claims that he was concerned about Mr. Clearlake's well-being rather than offended by the content of his speech. The First Amendment prohibits government officials from taking retaliatory actions against an individual in response to their protected expression. In the 2006 case of Hartman v. Moore, the Supreme Court stated that, quote, official reprisal for protected speech offends the Constitution because it threatens to inhibit exercise of the protected right, and the law is settled that as a general matter, the First Amendment prohibits government officials from subjecting an individual to retaliatory actions, including criminal prosecutions, for speaking out. As the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, which has jurisdiction over Texas, explained in the 2002 case of Keenan v. Tejeda, to establish a First Amendment retaliation claim, a plaintiff must show that, quote, they were engaged in constitutionally protected activity, the defendant's actions caused them to suffer an injury that would chill a person of ordinary firmness from continuing to engage in that activity, and the defendant's adverse actions were substantially motivated against the plaintiff's exercise of constitutionally protected conduct. Here, it is nearly indisputable that Mr. Clearlake was engaged in protected activity, as the Supreme Court has long held that profanity is protected speech under the First Amendment, and Deputy Vega admitted that he pulled over Mr. Clearlake because he yelled out the window. However, it is less clear whether a court would determine that being subjected to a traffic stop that resulted in a warning and no citation or arrest would constitute, quote, an injury that would chill a person of ordinary firmness from continuing to engage in that activity. In the Keenan case, the Fifth Circuit held that this element was satisfied by two traffic stops involving an undercurrent of violence that resulted in a minor citation and a criminal charge. However, the court also recognized that, quote, some retaliatory actions, even if they actually have the effect of chilling the plaintiff's speech, are too trivial or minor to be actionable as a violation of the First Amendment. For instance, in the 2009 case of Benson v. McKinney, the U.S. District Court in the Western District of Louisiana, which is part of the Fifth Circuit, held that a traffic stop resulting in a citation for which there was probable cause was not a sufficient injury for a First Amendment retaliation claim when the plaintiff did not allege that the ticketing officer threatened him or that the traffic stop was otherwise effectuated in an intimidating manner. Based on this decision, the Western District of Louisiana noted in the 2012 case of Simmons v. City of Mamou that, quote, not all instances of detention by police would chill a person of ordinary firmness from continuing to engage in protected activity. Therefore, it is possible that a court could conclude that Mr. Clearlake cannot pursue a First Amendment retaliation claim, even though it is evident that Deputy Vega initiated the traffic stop for a retaliatory purpose. However, it is much more likely that Mr. Clearlake could succeed in a claim that Deputy Vega violated his Fourth Amendment rights by initiating a traffic stop without reasonable suspicion or probable cause. Okay, you guys your driver's license? What for? Can you use the turn signal? Of course I did. You can hear the sound on the dash cam too. Let me see, let me see your driver license. You can just crack the window if that's what you want to do. It's already cracked. I can't see that. Well, it doesn't matter. Here. I don't wish to answer questions. You have to let me know if there's a weapon in the car. Did you not take the class? I did. did you, you when you demand identification, I have to display this. 
That's what they told me in the class. That's what the law says. The officer wants to take away. And actually, if I don't display, there's really not much you can do because there is no penalty attached to that. I have to carry this if I'm carrying uh, this. Are you carrying? I don't answer questions. Okay, so if you have a weapon in the car, then what? You got one on your hip. So what? Mr. Clear Lake, who is carrying a holstered firearm on his right hip, displays his driver's license and his license to carry when Deputy Vega asks for his identification, and then refuses to answer Deputy Vega's questions about if he has a handgun in the car. Under Section 46.02 of the Texas Penal Code, quote, A person commits an offense if the person intentionally, knowingly, or recklessly carries on or about his or her person a handgun in a motor vehicle that is owned by the person or under the person's control at any any time in which the handgun is in plain view, unless the person is 21 years of age or older, or is licensed to carry a handgun, and the handgun is carried in a holster. As of September 1st, 2021, Texas citizens who are not disqualified from carrying a handgun in a public place can do so without a license to carry, also known as an LTC. However, individuals who obtain a handgun license are subject to additional requirements when it comes to interactions with the police. Under Section 411.205 of the Texas Government Code, quote, if a license holder is carrying carrying a handgun on or about the license holder's person when a peace officer demands that the license holder display identification, the license holder shall display both the license holder's driver's license and the license holder's handgun license. The statute does not require the LTC holder to verbally affirm if they are carrying a firearm or provide any additional information. By displaying both his driver's license and his LTC when Deputy Vega requested his identification, Mr. Clearlake complied with this statute entirely and was not required to answer any of Deputy Vega's additional questions about whether there was a handgun in the car. Do I smell alcohol in your breath? No, you don't. How do I know? Because you can't smell my breath? I smell something coming oh, out. Oh, really? Let's see. Let me do some field sobriety on I you. don't think so. Okay. Yeah, where are you coming from? Huh? Where are you coming from? You saw me where I was coming from. Oh, I uh, saw you down are you done with this? I'm done with that, yeah. All right, cool. Where are you coming from? I don't answer questions. I've already told you. Let me know when I'm free to go. Also, what is your name? Your name? Sheriff, that's your name? Sheriff? Right above it, right there. I, I, I'm not familiar with the Eng English alphabet, sir. Okay, can I, have a, can I have an incident number, please? Oh, a ticket, a ticket, okay. Mr. Clearlake asks Deputy Vega for his name, and Deputy Vega refuses to provide it. Instead, he points at the name badge on his uniform and then tells Mr. Clearlake it will be on the ticket, after making a snide remark about his English skills. Policy 302 of the Harris County Sheriff Department Handbook, which outlines the department's requirements for so-called professional conduct by deputies and other HCSO employees, creates a so-called duty to provide official identification. The policy states that, quote, all employees shall present their H HCSO identification card when requested by a member of the public, when engaged in law enforcement activities, or when in uniform. Although Mr. Clearlake did not request Deputy Vega's identification card, he did ask for his name, and Deputy Vega's rude and mocking response certainly didn't comply with the spirit of this policy. However, it should be noted that citizens generally cannot seek legal recourse for even blatant violations of police department policies unless the officer's actions also constituted a violation of statute statutory or constitutional law. Okay? I don't want you exiting the vehicle because you have a weapon in the car. Did or I exit the or I'm going to Did I exit the vehicle? I'm, I'm, I'm did I exit up. the vehicle? Give your heads up. Did I exit the vehicle? Hey, can I You do have a dash cam, right? Very good. You can't just pull me over because I said the police. I hope you realize that. Stupid. I'm sorry? Do you have insurance on the vehicle? Yeah. Can you show it to me please? It doesn't come back. Of course he comes back. Not on my system, it doesn't. Also, it's not typical behavior for somebody to be yelling out of the vehicle. Have you had anything to drink tonight? Is that your current address? 1622? Is that a question? Yes, sir. Is that your current do address? I, do I answer questions? Okay, I'll just assume that's incorrect then. And why would you do that? Did you read my address on the driver license? It didn't have an, address, didn't that, have an apartment number. Of course it does. Let me see, can you have already seen it. I've already complied with that part. I know. Okay, I'll be right back. 
may I say that I've never met anybody quite like you that would uh, yell at an officer doing their job. But so you have a great let me understand. No fines, no penalties, Wait, may I ask you a question? Uh, questions on there? There's the uh, address. Yeah, no, the, I have a question. Can you get your supervisor right here, please? No, uh, is the stop over? The stop is over. You may leave. All right. We don't exit until I get out. Until I leave. Well, uh, you said the stop is over, right? Okay, I'm not. I'm not getting out. I will. Okay, there is no need to draw your weapon, man. Are you drawing your weapon? You I didn't get out of the car. You told me that already. Yeah. Did I get out of the car? Go yourself. Yeah. Right over there, you can. After Deputy Vega informs Mr. Clearlake that the traffic stop is over, he orders Mr. Clearlake to stay in his vehicle. Mr. Clearlake opens the door to his vehicle, but does not make any attempts to exit. And in response, Deputy Vega draws his weapon. According to Policy 505 of the Harris County Sheriff Department Handbook on the Use and Discharge of Firearms, quote, the deputy's unsnapping of the holster and placing a hand on the service weapon is permitted when approaching a possibly dangerous situation. And, quote, firearms may be removed from the holster and readied for use in situations where it is anticipated they may be required. However, the policy also states that, quote, firearms shall not be displayed or pointed in a threatening or intimidating fashion unless it is objectively reasonable to believe deadly force is justified, or there is a substantial risk that the situation may escalate to the point where deadly force would be justified. Firearms shall be secured and returned to their holsters as soon as practical when it is determined that deadly force will not be necessary. Another section of the policy requires deputies to, quote, exhaust all reasonable means of apprehension and control before resorting to the use of a firearm. Here, the footage does not show whether Deputy Vega simply held his weapon or if he displayed or pointed it in a threatening or intimidating fashion, but it is clear from Mr. Clearlake's reaction that he felt threatened. It is possible that Deputy Vega was acting within the authority granted to him in this policy by removing the firearm from the holster when Mr. Clearlake opened the vehicle door because he seemed to anticipate that Mr. Clearlake might exit the vehicle with the firearm he was carrying. However, it is much more challenging to justify an intimidating display of the weapon, as it does not seem that it would have been objectively reasonable for Deputy Vega to believe that deadly force was justified, or even that there was a substantial risk that the situation could escalate to that point when Mr. Clearlake simply opened the door to his vehicle. A warning? A warning? For what? Failed to signal return indicator within 100 feet. He drew the weapon on me. He drew the gun. After the traffic stop, Mr. Clearlake filed a public records request with the Harris County Sheriff's Office for the footage of the stop from Deputy Vega's body camera and dash cam, as well as additional info about Deputy Vega. The department claimed that his request was, quote, vague and or overly broad, and sent a request for clarification to the wrong email address. Mr. Clearlake was not aware of this request until he went to the department in person in an attempt to obtain the documents. As of the date of writing this episode, Mr. Clearlake has not indicated that he has received any any materials from the public records request. Mr. Clearlake has also indicated that he intends to file a complaint and a lawsuit. Overall, Deputy Vega gets an F for retaliating against Mr. Clearlake for exercising his First Amendment rights, initiating a traffic stop against him without reasonable suspicion, and unnecessarily brandishing his firearm. It is clear throughout the encounter that Deputy Vega was angry with Mr. Clearlake for the sentiment he shouted from his window, and mentions his speech several different times throughout the encounter. During the entire interaction, Deputy Vega seems to be looking for any excuse to take further action against Mr. Clearlake, and he goes on several fishing expeditions in an obvious attempt to obtain reasonable suspicion to search the vehicle or find some other justification to detain Mr. Clearlake for a longer time or arrest him. This traffic stop demonstrates why it is essential that police officers respect the First Amendment and refrain from allowing their egos to dictate their decision-making. Mr. Clearlake gets an A for refusing to answer any of Deputy Vega's questions, complying with the law while declining to provide any more information than was required, and for taking appropriate action 
action after the traffic stop. Although he used aggressive language towards Deputy Vega, he was completely within his First Amendment rights to do so. And Mr. Clear Lake demonstrated throughout the interaction that he was well-versed in both his constitutional rights and his legal obligations as an LTC holder. I commend Mr. Clear Lake for filing a public records request, following through when the records were not provided, and pursuing a complaint and a lawsuit against Deputy Vega. And it will be interesting to see how his case fares in court. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.